Okay, hi guys, welcome back to this new video. Okay, so I will show you how to extend your, your crossbow cluster by having a new node. Okay, so basically, this clear over here is my self uh, crossbow cluster which have uh, the button story safe. Okay, so here I have two and uh, three nodes. Okay, uh, three, three nodes and uh, three types of networks. Okay. Basically, a uh, reserve uh, cluster backend storage use two networks, the uh, public network and this backend network of the cluster network of Ceph, for those who are used to this uh, uh, types of networks. Okay, and I have also a management network that I I'm using just to access to this node and uh, perform management uh, action as well. Okay. But normally, the, the customers and client clients who want who would like to have access to the self cluster if you went, you went to coming through this uh, this uh, public network. Okay. Okay. So next step, and let's suppose that the main purpose of this uh, meeting or uh, this uh, uh, today video is to add a new node to my uh, first, add new node to my cluster, and second, uh, add this node to uh, extend my uh, self cluster. Okay. So to access, add new node to the cross my cluster, second cluster. Extend our cluster, uh, our backend storage cluster. Okay, so let's do that. Here I am in my cluster. I suppose that I have a set some workload on in production. So I have three nodes right now. I would like to add a, a another node, this one for instance. Okay, I would like to add this one in my cluster right now. And I suppose that currently my cluster has some nodes. Some more code on it. Okay, I have launched first something on this particular node. I'll show you it's this node particularly. I'll show you the yeah. So here is the IP address for this node. Okay, simple. This means that I have, I'm, I'm pinging this IP address to which way that during this operation, uh, I will uh, nothing will happen uh, badly to my uh, environment. Okay, so let's do that. So, first, to have this node to my cluster, I have to be sure that so this node is connected to a different network which are in my environment. Okay, I have the, the management networks, I have so the both public uh, network and uh, the self cluster. Uh, self, uh, OSD uh, cluster network also configured already, and uh, they are both for the both network as there as you can see right now. Okay, and we have the cluster. And also, those uh, networks which has been uh, uh, already configured, okay, on each node okay, of my cluster. Simple. And of the the Proxmos cluster uh, uh, has been mounted to this. Networks, okay. I'll show it to you uh, right now. So let's have this new uh, this new node to my cluster. Simply, very simple. I'm just coming here and uh, going to the cluster side. I will get the information to join the cluster, and uh, how I uh, copy the information of, to join the cluster. I'm coming coming here, and uh, I will just start joining over. Cluster here. Okay. Let's copy and paste the, this information, and I have to select. I have to select the the networks where I'm supposed to perform over the personal cluster. I suppose to be uh, uh, realized. Okay. Yeah. And I have to enter the root, pa the root password of the of my remote cluster. Great. Join the cluster. Yeah, let's say what notifications failure. So maybe um, I enter something wrong. It again, uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, that much is okay. So the login success and uh, my new node has joined the cluster. Okay, let me show the, the thing is still ongoing. So nothing bad will happen to my workload, my car on my production workload at the moment. So I have to refresh on this view. Here, if I refresh on the view, you can view that of the, this the new, new node has been added to my cluster simply. So it's simple and it's no big deal here. Let me connect again. Great. And um, now the, the node has been added to the cluster. Very simple. Okay, next steps. And uh, just a refresh. Yeah. So, next steps I would like, let's suppose that uh, this new node has been added to my cluster. Okay. At the moment, let, let me move on the self storage cluster part. Okay. So, the, second, the first step has been done, which means that we have, have added the node to my cluster. It's perfect. Now I will have to extend the the the, the myself cluster because this no particular not have some disk and some drives inside it, and I would like to ex extend uh, this uh, uh, my internal self cluster with the drive which which are within this particular host. Okay. So the first step is to have I have to configure or install the self storage on this node particularly. I'm coming here and I have to install self storage. Okay. Because for on the others, others node, I have already installed self. So, okay. Yeah, so I'm coming here first, install self storage. Since I have to select the version that I would like to install. Okay. Great. Next up. We have had the, the initial configuration has been, or has been already done, so don't need to have uh, to configure this one. Okay. Just because that we have this uh, this uh, view the configuration already initialized. Okay. Next. We finish it. Great. So this is done. This the self storage has been the self uh, packages have been uh, installed possibly on this node, particular node. Now it's okay. Let's me uh, review that uh, my self cluster. What is what will be the state to my self cluster right now? Okay, so let me go there. Here is a global view of the self storage at the moment. Okay, here is a global view of the self storage and uh. Let's suppose that, but because at the moment we have not let, you have not yet added the different drivers which are on this node in my cluster at the moment. Okay. So what I will do is this one. And um, I will uh, at the moment no OSDs or no drives which are on this node are in yet added to my cluster. Okay. To do that is very simple. I have just to click here, click, add a new node. So all drives, or not all drive by drive, I can add it. I can add it very much to my cluster at the moment. Okay, by doing this action. So you see is that the global uh, capacity or the global, uh, yes, the global capacity of my cluster will be uh, increased. One moment, just to remember for the cluster to detect this new OSDs. And uh, just a moment. Because how the new OSD has been added to the cluster, 
This means that the, the, the pages will be uh, sent or will be redistributed to this uh, new OSD that, has, that will have been added to my cluster. Simple. This is why we have this new, which is ongoing. All the pages will be uh, uh, Seth will be a uh, we we be sent again we be sent to existing OS, uh, PGs uh, to this new OSD that has been added to my cluster. So still this action is ongoing. You will have a warning in your cluster. But in a few moments, this one will be a uh, will be uh, will disappear. Simple as you can see. And meanwhile, let me show you. Meanwhile, my workload is uh, so ongoing. Nothing bad happens to my workload. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyway, let me uh, explain to you another thing. Uh, at the moment, after having this node to my cluster, we don't talk about all the monitors and the, the managers, okay? No need, okay? So because at the moment, we have we have enough monitors and enough uh, managers for my self storage uh, cluster, okay? Already we have three, we have three monitors, okay? And uh, we have uh, uh, we have three months at the moment. At the moment, we have to, it's very enough. It's enough for the cluster. Even the production cost will be for the cluster need uh, uh, three monitors. Okay, not more. Okay, and the uh, maximum uh, monitor that has been recommended is uh, five. Okay, so no need to have to go uh, over this number. Okay, concerning the manager, the same things. You can have two managers uh, for in your sub cluster. No need to have uh, more than uh, two or three or four managers. This is very enough for your okay, type for a tiny cluster. Three monitors and two managers is enough. Okay. The monitor is the uh, is the thing that have all the information about your set cluster, cluster storage. Okay. Regarding the different maps that we have within your set cluster, set cluster storage, the PG maps or the OSD map, the monitor maps and so on are being uh, stored here in the in the monitors. Okay. So customers or client clients or VMs, when they would like to store data within your set cluster, set of cluster storage, they will contact or will send request first to the monitor, which the monitor will send, which will reply to this client with the, your cluster map, okay, which contain all the IP address of your OSD and so on, which will permit the client to send the, the data to the right monitor also and to, to so, store the different data, okay. So, very important uh, goes into a strategic component in your cluster. Okay, manager, for instance, is a node that will have, uh, I mean, uh, the monitoring information of your cluster. This dashboard, for instance, has been uh, has been stored in the managers. Is because of the managers that we have uh, this dashboard, for instance. Okay, so let's move on. As you can see, uh, nothing bad happens to my cluster. The workload is still ongoing, processing nothing bad. Okay. I can have new OSDs again. Let me show you. Uh, let me have new OSD. As you can see, what is the file has, has been added. Let's have new OSD again. Let's create new OSD. Okay. Here is the really the very simplest way to to create a new OSD based on the drives that I have in my your nodes. Okay. I can have different types of nodes and the different number of configuration I can. Uh, I can choose to have a, a, a mechanical drives or uh, SSD drives, for instance, to add to my to my you know, to my uh, cluster. Very simple, and without affected my uh, workload. Okay, great. So let's move on, and uh, this part is okay. Uh, in my next video, I will show you how we can increase our replica. Uh, 
in your self story cluster how you can uh, configure or update the configuration regarding the replica because right now by default okay but let me show you something if i do uh, yeah self osd uh, at the moment i have only one pool configured in the cluster okay, this pool okay for instance if i do the layer You can use that I have all uh, those information which are you know my pool this one for instance I have a free replica by default okay for replica free free replica and uh, both replica as uh, by default free domain is our own host level so this means that when I store when uh, one gig of data I will have by the hand of uh, by the hand I have uh, two gig of uh, data stored in my cluster okay Be because of this value of of uh, of three okay and uh, this will come this this is the configuration by default for my the whole set cluster uh once you install it if i want to increase it uh, we have a, a specific procedure but let me show you this here for instance we have all this information by default right of two replicas okay configure every minimum of uh, replicas that, that you should have in your cluster you don't have to you have access to your data and so on for instance okay but the, the replica default is three okay and uh if you want to increase it we have two ways we can uh, i can we can first we can have this for the existing pools because right now all all operations are ongoing in my cluster and uh, this pool for instance handle the workload the production workload if i would like to increase this, this value of replica, this is very possible. I will show you on the next video. For the, for the next pool that you intend to create in your cluster, uh, cluster also, you can uh, uh, have to this uh, default value, okay, to the, your target default value of your pools, okay. Or you can, I will show you also how you can uh, set, set the value of the, of the, of the replica that you would like to have. Uh, when you create your pool okay so thank you very much i will see you on the next video and i hope that you enjoy if you have any questions please let me know and take care bye from now